Welcome into the casual gaming conversation. I'm Connor. That's Nick. This is your weekly gaming podcast from Co-op 64. That was aggressive this week. I was. I went for a big one. I went for a big one. Also, you you started talking towards me mid sip because like I just assumed for the first thirty seconds of the pod, I'm not gonna like gonna intro it. Man, I'm ready to go. I'm excited. This is one of those experiences of just like we just get to talk games. This yeah. isn't like focused. It's not going to be as like dialed in as a normal podcast. And I've been waiting to talk about some of these games on this show for about a month plus mm-hmm. or so. So I'm I'm stoked. You let the hair, you let the chest hair out. You're yeah, uh, it's show. a little hot in the apartment. So yeah, it <laughs> let it here. fly. That's fair enough. All right. Well, uh, as you know, this is your uh, gaming podcast from Club Sixty Four. We're going to do our hot takes to kick it off. Then we're jumping into uh, the games that we've been playing. We don't know exactly what this episode is going to be called, but we'll talk about that after. But we're just going to go through like I've played like six games in the last like two weeks and you've yeah. played like four, four. Um, that we're going to kind of go over and discuss real fast. Um, I didn't even have Sly Cooper on here. Yeah, that we can throw that on there too. We I mean, I don't even. <laughs> need, I have I have seven games. I think. Yeah. Right. Uh, so right now, the big reason we're doing six. this is we have been playing a lot of stuff in our backlogs and everything alongside doing the reviews and and everything so it's stellar blade rise of ronin these are games that came out in the past couple months that you guys have heard us talk in depth about but with our channel especially we've, we've always had a leaning on retro and playing some older games but not just older games as in snes through wii ps3 or whatever but like also, PS4, whatever, whatever, like just across the board, playing games that aren't this year. And as much as I love talking about game of the year type stuff and discussing top 10 list on the year, I, I think that this year more than ever, myself and also Brady have stepped up and played a bunch of old games. And I'm, yeah. I'm stoked to talk about it. It's going to be fun. We're going to do these every once in a while, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, throw it out there. And uh, th- th- this could. It's evergreen yeah, a little bit. Um, totally. We're, we're going to be talking about 10 different awesome fucking games. Like, that's super cool yeah. that you guys are. We're going to have them all time coded. I normally don't time code when, like, you can figure out what the time codes are for other things, like draft, big topic. It's really easy to figure out in a video. But because these are 10 games, if you want to listen to a particular game, I'll make sure that uh, it's time coded for audio listeners and on the YouTube. And then we're closing it out with the uh, non-human character, video game character draft, which Nick sent me that that topic, and I was like, I guess. Yeah. It, it's weird, but we, it's kind of we funny. And, uh, it's really broad, surprisingly. Oh, yeah. there's You, you got your robots. You got your animals. You got your aliens. aliens. Like, yeah. it's, I originally thought aliens because I was uh, doing some scheduling stuff for the rest of the year and really dialing in what I want to play on stream for my stuff. Uh, uh, and I've, I've said Mass Effect a few times as like something I want to get on the schedule to play through. God damn, and do you have Mass Effect characters on your list? Yeah, maybe. Dude, I thought there was no chance you had any Mass Effect characters on The first on thing I thought it was Mass Effect characters. I have like five listed just in case. Just in just case? Just to like pick from what, what, if, what if I pick your boy? Uh, it, no, do not. What if I pick him, Connor? Oh, I, if you, I, if we're thinking of the same character, I'm oh wait, it. we are thinking go of first, the same. But like, you can't pick wait, him do first. Do I go first? Overall. Yeah. I, no, because did you go first yesterday? Yeah. We're also shooting this the day after we shot yes. our last podcast. The reason we're doing this is because uh, I'm going to make us out of town. But we're also we we did the podcast yesterday, and now we're doing it today because yep. this will go up in a week. So we wanted it to be evergreen, so we weren't like dating ourselves completely. Yep. But. The, which um, is very nice. We I like these evergreen pods. We get to do oh, apparently you guys love them. They're some of our most successful pods are the evergreen ones, and so yeah. uh, they're we're we're stoked. All right, I'm gonna do the first hot take. Sounds good. Yeah, you got hot take number one today. Yep. It's like let me let me mute my phone just in case we've we've dealt with this issue before. That I always forget. And then I, my my phone starts blowing up because I'm so popular, dude. <laughs> so many so many people are texting him asking about his hair care routine. Yeah, they're asking about retro recommendations from the SNES. Like these are conversations that Connor has All on right. the daily. All right, my gaming hot take for this week is about the term movie game. Have you seen this going around on in comment sections? Are you talking about, about like Uncharted yeah. and Metal Gear Solid yeah, and like stuff like that? Games with a ton of cutscenes and a heavy focus on story that have really been paved by Sony these last few years and, and PlayStation, but they've been around for forever. And there's this disdain going around talking about how, dude, that game is just a movie. Like you just sit there and watch the game the entire time. And it's like, okay. 
But one of the big reasons that I play video games is to interact with that story and be involved in the story. Final Fantasy 16 has like seven hours of cutscenes in it, maybe more, probably more. Metal Gear Solid, old Metal Gear Solid games, you can put the controller down for like two hours at times, <laughs> I swear to God, and they're just yapping, but it's super interesting and weird and cool. And this is some of my favorite aspects of games is is experiencing the gameplay and having fun with the gameplay and then being able to sit back and enjoy emotional story beats. And I don't want this. It, certainly there's some sort of balancing act here that you can go totally crazy with it. But then there's there's interactive stories that are literally just making choices like your Until Dawns or The Walking Deads that like that's just an interactive movie. And that's great as well. I, I just don't like this term being thrown around as a pejorative uh, and to negatively talk about video games that have a heavy focus on story. Yeah, I completely agree. Some of my favorite games of all time are story games and the there's three different things that are like mixtures of what you can be watching on the screen. You have your straight up gameplay. That is what you're doing moment to moment. Then you have your real time events that sort of merge gameplay that's like hit square, but like quick time events. Yeah, quick time events. What did I say? Real time events? Yeah. Uh, quick time events. Thank you. Um, quick time events where it's like it's square to move on and everything. And like that's basically a cutscene. Let's be yeah. real. That's a cutscene. I love that, quick time events. Oh, I love a good quick Everybody time event. Everybody hates them. They, they went a little too hard on them in like the mid 2000s, early 2010s, but I still like them. <laughs> Stellar Blade has great moments with some quick time events that are like butt mashing oh, and dude, stuff like that. Was, and I love those moments. There was nothing worse than finishing a boss and forgetting that there's, there's the always quick a quick time event at the very end of, of a boss battle. So I would like, I would be, oh, and like maybe even put my controller down and be like, oh, Jesus yep. Christ. <laughs> there was a moment where I was reviewing Stellar Blade at like 2 a.m. and all of a sudden, I literally put the control down to get ready to go to bed. I'm watching the cutscene and like I'm standing up and I did the oh shit. Yeah. Like it was. Did you uh, ever miss one? No, I never. I wonder missed if one. you die. If you I, you pro- I assume you restart. That would be. I I think I would throw my controller <laughs> through the TV. <laughs> With some of those boss fights, yeah. absolutely. But I I love these games. I love these story based games. I love a good narrative. Some of my biggest critiques for some of the best franchises out there, like Mario and Zelda, are the lack of a focus of a story. And those are great games with unbelievable gameplay and unbelievable music and those are like things that i will appreciate about a game but i also want a story that grips me and a lot of the ways that you can do that are through the performances like your troy baker and ashley johnson from the last of us where like those performances in those cutscenes are some of the highlights of those games and so i sure call it a bad term It's, it's almost like the franchise quarterback or mickey mouse tournament thing where like people want to go and use sports analogies for these pejorative like bad terms that are like no they're just a great player or like no like they won a championship that's validated like it's i i i think that they're used to be negatives for things that are already amazing and you don't really need to talk about them beyond that yeah i think i think they just use it as a term or people use it as a term when they don't have anything else valid to say about <laughs> about the game or whatever. Yep. That they're just like, oh, it has a lot of cutscenes. It's just a fucking movie. It's like, okay. Or like, it's the same way that people talk about walking sims. Yep. It's like, yeah, some of the greatest games of all time are straight up walking sims. Gone Home, excellent. Uh, Journey. Journey, that is literally a walking sim. <laughs> and it's one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, so like walking around in environments and like interacting with, with your, your surroundings, like might just be a walking sim, but like, it's it's a great vehicle for for telling a story and, and having a, uh, a gameplay experience. So like I don't I don't know. Absolutely. All it's right. Immersive. My hot take includes some notes, so I need to make sure to I'm afraid dial it in and have those up. My gaming hot take for this week is about Xbox Game Pass. It is more than ever the best deal in gaming uh, in gaming. Oh, I'm just, just gonna restart it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my gaming hot take for this week is all about Xbox Game Pass and being the best deal in gaming. This has been just like fluff piece for a long time. It's the best deal in gaming. It's really good. And for a long time, I've hated on Xbox Game Pass because a lot of the titles are things that you, if you're interested in it, you've already played it. And then it's on Game Pass and you're not interested in it anymore. And then you have your forever games like the Master Chief Collection, but like. Those aren't, you probably already own it if you have an Xbox One or something like that. I, for a long time, have dunked on Xbox Game Pass. Here has what they've done in the last year with Xbox Game Pass. Hi-Fi Rush, Cocoon, Sea of Stars, Lies of Pete. Those are all game, great games from last year. This year, Power World, one of the biggest games out there, was on Xbox Game Pass. And now another Crab's Treasure. This is uh, a 
delightful souls like that everyone is talking about right now and it really digging into and enjoying all these games are on game pass and it's great they gave a crap a gun funny the, shit i've ever seen funny <laughs> shit i've ever seen what i'm trying to say with this hot take is we need to start to recognize that in a world where nintendo first party is just sucking it hasn't done anything impressive this year in a world where playstation first party exclusives sure final fantasy 7 rebirth amazing but from their first party output nothing xbox game pass is out here making deals on deals to bring in these smaller titles three of those titles are under 30 dollar titles wait uh, sea stars might be more expensive um but i was saying cocoon and another scrap of treasure like those are great smaller games that get the people talking that are critically acclaimed but also just really fun games they're doing things. They're now figuring out the right deals that I'm like, oh, wait, that's day one Game Pass. Hell yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. Another crowd treasure, I'm, I'm a busy lad nowadays. Right. I play a lot of games, and certain ones have to go and be put at the wayside. Because it's on Game Pass, I'm going to play it for a couple there, hours. There's no chance I would have played that game if it wasn't on Game Pass. Like It's just it's there. It's like I might as well, and it looks fun. Yeah. I, I'm just playing a lot right now. So, uh, But I'm, I'm going to make time for it. For, for sure. Absolutely. And I just want to give it a shout-out because... I feel like the press always with Team Green is bad. They're doing some good stuff over there on Game Pass right now, and I, they deserve some praise for the last year of output. Right on. See, so their financials came out, Xbox's financials, uh, like their fiscal, their entire year, yeah. their fiscal year. They sold 800,000 Xboxes in a quarter. It's not a lot. That That is catastrophically bad. Yeah. They're, they're in the green because of ABK yeah. and like from, from like software sales, but like, holy crap it, it just leads to like it, obviously they're releasing <laughs> their games on other consoles it's like they have to i mean like there's no other place to play them they need to make money i know that i know that microsoft is like flush with cash and they can just throw money around like like they can it, take it, losses yeah they losses, can do whatever yeah. they want but like they're still in the business of making money they yeah. want to make money they're not, they're not in the business of selling eight hundred thousand xboxes that's horrible dude that is that's blasphemous but it took me a second to be like eight hundred thousand money for me. That's a lot. Yeah, consoles sold by a major manufacturer when there's eight billion people in the world, not so much. Right, like that's insane. I, I mean, like well, PlayStation's at like almost sixty million now. It was at fifty five recently. Or for PS fives. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I didn't know it was that. It's high. outselling the PS four. It's about oh, yeah. to. It's about to fall behind it though. I think. Which I mean. Let's let's get it. I'm, it's great news for PS5. More people get to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm happy for them. And by outselling, I mean outpacing. Outpacing. Right? I know that's yeah. not passed yet. That yeah, would no, be I, insane. I didn't know if somebody would yeah. comment that or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm sorry for the Xbox tangent. I just heard that today. I was like, holy crap. This but is... Sea of Thieves and Pentiment and all these games are doing really, really well on yep. PlayStation. It's like, there, there's another. the next game is around the corner. You already know it. Starfield is going to come to, to PlayStation. I would bet my house on it i don't even own a house i'll bet my future <laughs> house on it i have said it from the very start i year exclusive you give it every single game needs yeah. to be at least one year and for your major multiplayer games have a conversation about it but i i, I think for major releases your tent pole first party output needs to be two years and that's fine mm. if you give me if you give me two extra years with elder scroll six even though i'm not a huge yes fan i that's worth the next box right uh, comparatively, and then you get your bonus win with the PlayStation fans down the line, but that gives you a reason to buy an Xbox still. Two years, one year, I feel like you drop a lot of people um, yeah. with your major output. I think you drop a lot of people anyways, or if you're still hanging on to your Xbox, it's like you're probably never going to switch no matter what unless yeah. they stop making Xboxes. Xboxes. They won't. But that's this case with me and PlayStation, and, and like I'm not going to switch. I'm not going to switch. I would I would need to buy the other yeah. console in tandem with with my PlayStation. I'm too deep. I have uh, way too many trophies. I'm excited. We're, we're most likely going to have to get a Series X in here soon, too, which finally... Or you could just upgrade your PC, you freaking dork. Yeah, but why would I want to upgrade my PC when we need something for the couch co-op uh, for, uh, for <laughs> Xbox games? We, we need have a couch, couch co-op co Halo. Oh, I guess that's... Le that cool. happens in August this year. Go and check that out. Extra Life is going to be a lot of fun. All righty. Let's jump, jump into the games. I have six. You have four. So I'll kick it off. I'll double up on one of these, I guess. Um, start out every single one with whether or not where you're at with it. I think is the best place to where go. Where I finished it, wh wh like whether or not you finished it, or if you're still playing stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the first game that I'm going to discuss is Balatro, which is this little indie title that focuses on making poker hands 
and just racking up points, racking up chips, rack, seeing that number go burr, as I, as I say. Yeah. Uh, it feels so good. Um, this title came out of nowhere. I got recommended by a few people and a few podcasts to check it out. It's one of those games that, like, it starts simple, and you're you're kind of just you're you're doing your basic, um, your basic poker hands to try to to get chips. But then you add in these jokers, and the jokers give specific multipliers to your poker hands, and you can like stack up five of them. Um, and it's a roguelike, by the way. Yeah. So like, each round you're going through, you're trying to get further and further. You have to hit a blind, which means you have to hit a certain number to progress. And if you don't hit that number, then you restart, reset. Um, you're unlocking new decks. You're unlocking new jokers. There's different ways to add multipliers to specific types of hands, full houses, flushes. You can get specific uh, planet cards to upgrade each uh, card hand type or whatever. So you're, you're just continuing to up that multiplier and it gets crazy. And when you, you start nailing certain combos of like, okay, I have a spade times four joker i have a 100 chips if it includes a uh three of a kind in the hand and then i have like a level four uh full house so that includes the the uh three of a kind multiplier or whatever like you're just like bing bong boom boom and the sounds in this game and the music like it it's just the perfect dopamine hit <laughs> like every single time like you hit like a really good hand and you get the bing 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 and like and it just keeps going up and there's a little fire on top of your numbers or whatever when you're like really hitting like a really good multiplier or whatever Nail shots. It's, it's just like oh man like yeah, the number goes burr dude it's just like I, I i have i'm early days in comparison to a lot of people i haven't finished uh the you're trying to get to eight antis there's three blinds per ante i got to the final blind in the last ante and lost which was so depressing so can you beat this game like is there a so, is I, that mean, like, the, I think that's like where that's your goal but i've seen other people like have 36 out of eight ante so i think it just goes you can forever. go as, and as when, high as you and want. when you keep progressing and keep unlocking new cars and, and having new multipliers and ways to like unlock new decks that have different like parameters like it gives you an extra hand or you make more money per hand which allows you to buy more uh cards in the store to like get those multipliers and jokers um so you can like keep getting your number higher like i've seen people with like the number and then like the e next to it and then like the small number next to it i don't know what is that called like where where it's not exponent <laughs> but like it's like it's like that's the number of zeros next to it because the number is too big Oh shit! So it's like E thirty seven oh, yeah. or whatever. I, I, I think Where, it is. It's supposed to be. It's not an exponent, but it's the amount. Yeah. It, so like the about. number gets fucking insane. Like I was watching this guy. <laughs> he he had to like speed it up like times four because the nut like the tabulations were going for like so long. It was like a five minute video, and like it, it was like seven seventy to trillion or whatever like yeah. it was it was an insane number and it's like man like people the way people game this game and like get so deep into it is so cool it's one of those awesome games where it's like it's simple to pick up i was actually like kind of bored when i was first starting it and then like something clicked and in the like the dopamine hits started to happen and i was like oh this is really really good Blatro, check it out if you haven't it's on i think it's on everything yeah. they should put it on phones Mobile. Yeah, yeah i think that they said that they were talking about it for me i'm stoked to hop into this it's a fucking poker video game that's apparently amazing yeah. poker is my all-time favorite game like i think more than any other video game i love poker i love playing with friends it's it's something that I, i've enjoyed since i was like seven years old like yeah. i love playing poker and so i i saw this come out i saw some circles talking about it and i was like i should try to get to this this year the major releases just kept on coming and then certain streaming games just were, were rolling through and i really didn't have time but brady has some interest in it I currently have Brady's Switch. I called him up and I was like, hey, man, I'll pay for the game. I'll, I'll, I'll use my own money and I'll, I'll buy Bellatro. And he's just like, I mean, yeah, take the Switch, go down to Atlanta, have fun. So I'm going to play a few hours on the plane down, on the plane up. I plan on uh, getting to the airport a little bit earlier on Friday, too, to make sure that I can uh, fly out in time and everything. I took the day off. So going to hopefully have a couple hours at the gate to, to chill right. out, play some Bellatro and really sink into this because – you talking about it and like just being like you're into it as someone that doesn't 
play you play a lot of cards like you play a, a, a bunch of cards it's not poker though you're just I know, making but poker hands it's, it, it's a, so it's confusing yeah but like, it, i when you're like there's joker multipliers and everything that like the, there's card systems in here that yeah uh, i feel like you're just playing a uh a jokers are wild type of poker but the jokers being wild aren't just a you it can be the ace of spades if you wanted to it can be a 50 times well i'm like like, yeah, that sounds so yeah. cool. Like, I'm all about it. I'm curious to see what I think about it because uh, you said it did take a little time to ramp up. I'm probably going to give it, like, a play for, like, six hours and give it just a good try. Of, the first hour was boring. And then yeah. It, because you're unlocking new jokers that have new Abilities like, modifiers and, and that everything. continue to, to develop things. And, and another big factor is you have a certain number of discards. So you have, like, ten cards in your hand, and you're choosing five to make your your hand. Yeah. And if you have stuff that you like, don't like in there, you can like discard like a bunch of them as up to five, and just get rid of them, yeah. and then get five new cards. And like the weighing your <laughs> like the consequences of discarding, and like hoping you get that last card that, that you, you need, need to like make that hand that you're looking for. Like I've been in situations where I have one more discard left. If I discard this and I get nothing, I'm screwed. It's over. And then the, the card so comes it's up. A, it's a draw system of poker. Yeah. You're playing a okay. And the yeah. card comes up and you're like, oh yes, there you God. go. And then when it doesn't, devastation, tragedy, tragedy yeah. dude. Like it's one of those things where like when I talk about this game, there's so many like factors, like the planets. There's these celestial cards that like have other mod modifiers. There's the tarot cards that change your like basic cards into uh like it'll like you can change all of five cards into one suit which will like help you like make flushes and and straights or like uh, straight flushes or whatever or and, and you can factor that in with your your jokers that have like okay i have a heart multiplier joker if i can get this tarot card to like change all of these into hearts it's like i'm gonna have a way easier time of getting more hearts in my hands because i'm changing them or whatever and then, like, you can also add just basic cards to your <laughs> to your deck. So, like, you start with uh, fifty. I feel like it's fifty four for some reason, but it, it's got to be fifty two, right? Yeah, that makes. Oh, wait, no, if it's jokers, two jokers. No, the jokers aren't. The jokers aren't in the deck. Okay, then yeah, it's fifty two. It must be fifty two. Uh, but like, you can get like all the way up there or okay. whatever, and it, it's. I feel like I, just, I it's the ramblings of a madman when I talk about this game because yeah. there's so many different factors that like it's kind of hard to follow. When other people were talking about it on podcasts, like I didn't think it sounded that great, or I didn't really have my like full scope around it. I just heard that they really liked it. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't understand it. So now I'm trying to explain it. <laughs> it's really hard to explain. So I watched uh, one Snowbike Mike play for a few hours. Like uh, I was doing yeah. some editing and having him up in the background and hearing the whoa, like multiply, like and just yeah. like those moments and those endorphin hits where I would like look up at the computer and everything. But I, I'm in. I'm super excited to give it a shot. Um, do I, is it twenty or thirty bucks? remember 20 yeah. yeah, i think I, by the way sea of stars is 35 dollars. i remember that one uh yeah, as you were saying it i was like oh, what did i pay for that 35 dollars. okay yeah, um, it's a callback. but yeah uh what was i gonna say shoot i, I had oh what does this game are, are you gonna play more of it and yeah i think like, i'll play all year like, yeah just I, i'm probably year. just gonna kind of yeah just if I ever get on a plane, this is going to be the game. Yeah. That it, it reminds me of like Vampire Survivors in okay. that way. That I'm just like, fuck it, let's run a game of Vampire Survivors and just yeah. see how far I can get. Or like, I got 30 minutes, and I can just I can just sleep the switch if I need to. Like, and then I can just hop back in whenever nice. I'm ready to go. Like, it's really easy to just be like, oh, where was I? Oh, okay, and then yeah, yeah. secondly, the, this year it feels like there's openings for it. Could you see this cracking your top ten? It'll definitely be my top 10, yeah. Fuck yeah. 93 uh, on Metacritic. Really? It was on the PS5 list. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. Insane. I mean, like, there's not really also, a lot of... Also, go, go and check out our PS5 list. There's a little spoiler for you. Yeah, there's not a lot of holes to poke in Bellatra. Like, it, it's just well, a great well, game. Like, I don't know what you would say negatively about it, honestly. Like, maybe there's not a ton of depth or something, but, like... It, it seems like there's like a shit there ton is. of depth, yeah. yeah. But, like, I don't know. And different strategies you can implore. I, I mean, this is... It's saying all the right things. I, I'm I'm stoked for it. I'm excited to hear what you say. Uh, what more about it? And obviously, if we get the chance uh, with me being able to discuss it online, I, I'm excited. I've to been played so. in a few days, and I'm talking about. It. I'm like, oh man, I want to play Blotch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to hop into your first game? Yeah, you can go wherever you like. Ooh, I'm going to hop in 
to the game I've beat most recently and start with Twilight Princess. Okay. That's where I want to start. Twilight Princess is really great. It is not a 9 out of 10 plus for me. Yeah. Where a lot of people, when we when this whole thing started of Nick has to beat a Zelda game, this is back in like August when we, or not August, because uh, that, it, it was it was Extra Life. This That's where it really started. And I, for some reason, I'm thinking about Extra Life right now, which is in August this year. It started in October. And I was like, what Zelda game would you want me to play on stream? And the whole reason that we put this on the thermometer was people were like, you're going to try Tears this year and everything, you're going to play Tears. So play Twilight Princess on stream. That should be your linear Zelda experience that we want to give to you. And I said, okay. And I was ready to have my socks blown off. And it just, it, it didn't happen. I could have yeah, guessed this from a mile away. Uh, what, what, just knowing about you and the way that you I'd like to play enjoy games. games. The classic Zelda games, and Twilight Princess obviously isn't like Ocarina or as yeah. old as that, but I would still consider it. The classic formula, yeah, non, than, non, no, not Breath of the Wild or Tears, yeah, not super open, are very rigid, yeah. like in what they are asking you to do. Like, and a lot of people like that, but like when you go into a temple, there is one way to to complete that temple usually. Like yeah. you have to do the parameters the, that they set out for you to progress, and you don't like to be stuck in video games. I I I hate being stuck. I hate being turned around. I hate not having directives. Uh, is a big thing. Um. There was multiple moments in this game that I was like, "Am I just stupid?" Like, yeah. there, which I'm okay with being stupid. Like, I there's moments in games that like, I understand I can be the moron, and the game is like being like, "You're just dumb," and I'm like, "Okay, that's not my fault." Oh, sorry, that's mm -hmm. not the game's fault. That's my fault. Right. There was multiple moments in this game where I'm like, I don't think this is necessarily my fault. Where I would be in a room and uh, there there was a the last day of playing is one of the most notable, and that's where I went down from that like. Oh, I think this game is amazing because I think that there's a lot of terrific level design. I think these temples and dungeon-based things are uh, are terrifically laid out. Mm -hmm. um, somebody did mention, and I did look up the YouTube video, oh, yeah. they're all the exact same or, 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 like design where it's like, go here. Wait, no, this is going to be blocked off. So you need to go back and then go to the west. And then you go up, left, down, and then you get that. And then you go all the way back around and then you go down. And like every oh, single really? one is very, very similar in uh -huh. the overarching construction of the temples um which i, I find very funny looking back on it 100 percent true but the there's multiple times where i got stuck didn't really understand the directioning of where i needed to go didn't like certain uh jank in some of the controls the game starts out immensely slow that that first two two and a half hours i'm like no one's having fun yeah. No one's having fun doing this. I've heard um, that's, that's a common consensus. Yeah, which I'm process. very thankful that my first play session was a forced six hours. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, I did get to experience fun that night. And a lot, yeah. most of the night was fun. But I, I can't just, like, forget about that. Especially where Zelda is it's so magical with the music and the presentation that all of a sudden I'm two hours in. I'm like, the music's great. That's all I'm enjoying right now. And then as the game progresses, there temples every single time not every single time there's like eight different temples four of them i was like a little too long look just a little bit like you're making me do one to two extra things that we do not need like i i felt like there was moments that they were trying to make me understand a mechanic that they just gave me a little bit better then i'm like i don't understand it like I, I i've done like two rooms with this mechanic now i fully understand what you're trying to ask me to do now you're just making me do another 30 minutes of not having fun, and I just want to get to the boss and progress. Mm -hmm. And that happened three or four times. And then there was moments of, like, the, these boss fights, all terrific. Like, there, there's so many great things I want to discuss about this game, but I'm trying to focus on the negative because I feel like, I, I feel like I'm going to get yelled at for not enjoying this game. Twilight Princess isn't like this universally beloved it has like game. a 97 on metacritic I, <laughs> like it is it is pretty damn universally loved I'm some gonna, people i mean like wind waker ocarina majora's mask i feel like twilight princess is especially if you played the wii version a lot of people don't like the motion controls you know uh link is left-handed i don't know which yes, one is he, he is he, in twilight princess by the way it has a 95 on metacritic that is a that's a top 100 game no i, uh, like, I totally understand I, Review wise, is different than like the the user consensus. I, I understand. I'm not saying consensus, yeah. but I'm saying there are there are Twilight Princess detractors. Yeah, and I think that those detractors are just really apparent. Especially, I know that this is like an unfair 
Judgment. Tears of the Kingdom. You have shrines, which are those small endorphin hits. You do have four temples to do. Really five. And yeah. then yeah, like but like four major temples that you have to do, and all of them are very well constructed. They don't last too long. They are they move forward and I like I love the design of those temples I compared hate, I- Sorry to interrupt you. I hate the temples. I, I think comparatively, tears. it is so much worse. I, I like, disagree. I completely disagree. I prefer the ocarina temples that I did. I think they're way more distinctive and interesting and like have cool gameplay mechanics and, and feel really distinct. Whereas the ones in uh, in tears are just like reskins of each other. They They sometimes will have like little changes like with the water and i do think though that the core mechanics of tears are so damn good that that's what made it fun across the board comparatively to the temples themselves. i will say that yeah um but the for the good of this game i i adored all the mechanics that i was given throughout this game like holy shit they the gameplay itself and the mechanics that you're given in the tool belt is just every single new item i was like fuck yeah like this is great I did have, I need to mention this. There's one moment in this game that I despised more than any other moment. And I t- I said it on stream. I'm like, this might be my biggest pet peeve in all of gaming. If I am going through something and I'm, I'm charging forward and all of a sudden I don't have the right item and I need to backtrack, but they should give me the item as they've done the entire game. It made no sense. I needed to go. There's a section where you need a bomb, but you need a specific bomb. You can't just have... Uh, whatever bomb that you're using the latest bomb that they give you like for a like new item was the one that i had and normally it would be like okay just open the chest over here that has arrows if you need arrows or open the chest over here that has whatever mechanic you need uh, a yeah. uh, extra um slingshot ammo there was no bombs and everyone was like oh there should be bombs and there weren't bombs and then we looked it up and there weren't bombs and i was like now i literally have to i've been looking for 20 minutes to try to figure this out now it takes me 15 minutes to go out, 15 minutes to go back in just to do this one small meal task in the temple. I was I was like, that is poor design in my mind. But it's not just poor design in the sense of like, oh, like this is like a five minute, like quick, like I'll be right back to the fun. This was a, well, I'm just now for 30 minutes. I know for a fact I'm not going to have fun. Like I know that I'm just re-trugging through sections. Yeah, but I, I hate backtrack. I, I hate it. Like I can't like especially where all the other level design in this game for stuff like that is they know what they're doing. They, mm-hmm. They've shown me that they have a consciousness to be like, hey, if you need a water bomb, there's going to be a water bomb chest close enough to you to like make sure that you have that supply, to have that moment. Not great. Boss fights are terrific in this game. Temple level design is terrific. How about the story? The, st- I, the story is good. And I, I talked to Shane about it yesterday and it, like uh, about the theme of decay that is happening within this world and everything. It didn't hit for me. It didn't, like, make me reconsider what, like, I thought about Zelda storytelling and themes, which is, like, they're good. They're not going to hit me in the way that... I, and, like, I'm not trying to, like, compare these the level of story. The best part about Zelda is the gameplay and the temples and everything. Like, mm-hmm. that's the moment-to-moment enjoyment. The feeling of adventure. And adventure and, like getting better in like defeating the big boss at the end of this game. It's very similar in my mind to Mario. I, uh, for some reason, just like you're progressing the gameplay is what the focus is. It's not about the story, but the, it, the story, it was like, it was really good. It was, it, it, it was a solid, like eight out of 10, 7.5 out of 10 story. The theme of the world decaying and like trying to overcome that and, uh, fight against that. It, it was, it's great. And, uh, Midna is a great companion. I, I when we were doing the no humans list, I saw that she was on a couple of things. That when I did some research, and I'm like, I good character, not like insanely fun. Like we were as a chat, all calling her mommy throughout the game, and like that's fun. <laughs> Why? But I don't know. Our chat's weird. <laughs> I did not say it first. Trust me. I, I question. I didn't say it first, second, third, fourth, seventeenth. Like people were in there. That's anyways. Weird. Uh, I think it's because of something that happens later in the game. Um, oh. But we, we go and we progress, and it's a really great game. But I, I can officially I officially say I have Wind Waker on the schedule now for Tuesday, Thursday streams later in the year. That is going to happen. I can't let you get to Wind Waker before I do. 
Same with Twilight Princess. And Same with Metal Gear Solid 3. Like, <laughs> I said last night that I, I'm going to do yeah. Secret of Mana and, and then, then huh. play Metal Gear Solid I think 3 that we should do a Metal Gear Solid 1 through 3 spoiler cast or something. Just like a full retrospective on that I, entire I, collection. I feel like there's so it's so in-depth with its story that I would... I don't even know where to begin yeah. tackling two. Like, <laughs> like I, I know I can talk about one pretty easily, but one's even pretty then, like, two is like crazy. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to eventually do a drunk explains for Mel Cure. Yeah. Oh, like I'm not saying this year or next year. I would need to do like research yeah. though and like make sure oh, I yeah. knew my shit. Cause there's definitely people who know metal gear way better than I do. Totally. But it's, I'm, I'm just coming around to just say I, I really enjoyed this game and I enjoyed the experience and I want to give a major shout out to all the people that watched like, 40 hours, uh, I was on stream for over 40, like 43-ish hours in three weekends. That's nuts. Uh, but uh, that's just for Twilight Princess. I was also on stream for seven more hours for our, uh, what do you call it, stream, short game stream. Mm -hmm. And so this has been by far the most difficult bit of streaming I've ever done. It, like it was, it, I, I said it was more difficult than the 48 because like doing this for three straight weekends is and just not having weekends was taxing. Wow, I didn't, I didn't uh, hear that. Oh, I, I threw it in our Discord Um, because, like, it, that was a one-weekend adventure, but, like, afterwards we had time to recover and everything. You're just a spry the, man, dude. I don't I don't know. 48 hours straight for me was... Oh, I'm not oh saying goodness. that was fucking easy. Oh, I'm saying so that... They, I'm trying to go and say that this was somehow harder than that. Um, But I really enjoyed it, and I, I just want to shout out everyone that showed up. There was people that literally were rocking with me late certain nights and then the shout out to the people that on the one night i stayed up to like 1 40 a.m playing were there at 9 a.m the next morning also watching yeah. that that was terrific i i our chat and community is amazing and this whole experience just proved why all right i'm gonna do two two hits here power hour uh, power 10 minutes <laughs> um guitar man and Mega Man 2, real fast. I've been playing a lot of retro stuff. Been Wait, why, why are you playing these retro games, Connor? Because uh, we have a new show called Return to Retro, where yeah. I review my borderline irresponsible level backlog uh, and uh, get through them and give you a review to try to <laughs> feel a little bit better about the amount of money I've spent on all these games. <laughs> Connor is writing again is the big headline yeah. for me. Uh, you're, you're doing written reviews. They're giving me on TikTok. I'm, yeah. I'm so stoked. I'm... Uh, I'm editing the first one sometime this week and everything. Uh, I'm stoked. I'm like it, it, watching you record uh, for the first time in a while. One of the like a written scripted review. I, it just like it puts a smile on my face. I think that it's just definitely your bag. I'm you're, curious. You're killer at it. I'm curious to see how they do. I assume not. Not like, they're well, not like, yeah. great, but it's one of those situations that like I just want to do it. A passion project. Yeah. Whatever, like so, I, well, I'll, I feel like you writing. It's so damn good. It also just gives us a completely new avenue on the channel that like we don't do anything else like this on the channel. Period. Mm -hmm. like, there's it, we and I when people like Nick should do top fifty. I was like, I'm not a writer. Like that's not. I'm a yapper. Like that. That is what I do. Yeah. And so to get you back writing and for this to be a very irregularly scheduled show, like it's gonna happen when it makes sense for you to write. I'm stoked about it. Um, so that'll be up on Thursday. Thursday when this posts. Yeah. 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 After this post. So the first episode will be coming up shortly. Guitar Man. So I'm going to save my thoughts. My, yeah. my, but, but high level talking about Guitar Man. I love this game. It's wacky. It's weird. It's one of the strangest games I've ever played. It's a rhythm game made by the people who went on to make Elite Beat Agents, which is on the DS, which is another weird rhythm game. What? For some reason, Beat Agents, I just thought about beat in an inappropriate way of, of, of <laughs> i'm sorry Con, I, I, just, Con, I didn't want i tried to conceal yeah like and you just like what i was like fuck um, oh. so the way that the game works is you're using like the left stick to ride a line so like the line will come from any uh, direction and you're like just holding along the line or whatever to like just trace it basically yeah. and you're pressing circle to like the the beats or whatever and it range it ranges the music type ranges from like jazz to pop to rock ballads to like operatic heavy metal like it's it's out of control it's amazing like i just want more weird interesting games and the ps2 is really great for that yeah. for like just weird very japanese very 
awesome games like yeah. that like have that distinctive flavor and i uh i love it so yeah guitar man i highly recommend it review coming shortly Mega Man 2. I've never played a Mega Man game before. Well, I've played X like a little bit. Like I've, t- I've, yeah. I've messed around with that. I've never beaten it, but I've never beaten a Mega Man game. I heard that they were really hard. Like really yeah, hard. They're... Cake. Oh. Beat it in like three hours. Nice. Two hours. And like certainly I did die on a few things, but like I, so there's a normal difficulty and a difficult difficulty. And I think if, if my memory is serving me correctly, the difficult level is normal in japan and then they thought these americans <laughs> are dumb weaklings <laughs> and we need a normal mode for them so they don't get frustrated uh because they, they're not of uh, the same skill level i guess is is like the reasoning that it's in the game like that so i played on normal and i thought it was cake i don't know if everybody else is playing on difficult and that's like the way that you're supposed to play the game but i played on normal i struggled at the very end of the game um with like the final like wily like boss rush and then the final like wily boss um because you have to beat every single boss again in in one room and then you go on and fight like wily's ship and then you fight like a like an alien type deal or whatever and then the game ends but uh i found that kind of difficult but otherwise like there's some difficult platforming sections there's some uh interesting difficult bosses at the start but once you start getting so you defeat a boss and then you get their powers and then you oh can, nice and then you can use their power to effectively fight against other bosses so there's an order you're supposed to go in and i did fall i looked up the order i oh, I, nice. I just was like what is, like yeah but you can go in any order but like depending on how you do it like you can get this guy's weapon to like go against this guy because it'll be weaker against him or whatever yeah. or it'll weaken him uh faster so some of these bosses was taking out in like one or two hits. Oh, like, hell yeah. or not one or two. Do like you think two that the three, ordering, of, like knowing the ordering definitely helped? With it, I mean, it definitely, set? yeah, probably. So maybe that's why I found it so yeah. easy. But for the most part, like the, the thing that really stood out to me about Mega Man 2 is the pizzazz, the accoutrements, the sauce, the sauce. It's got really interesting enemy designs, boss designs. I love like the different robot masters. I think is what they're called. I think Wily's an interesting villain, like, and just kind of wacky and cool. Um, the levels all have like a distinctive look and flavor, but the main thing is the music, man. The music is so good in this game. Um, just awesome chip tune goodness. Like it's, it's really great. Like that's what's going to be like the really lasting thing when it comes to, uh, Mega Man two and my experience with it. So, I recommend it. I mean, like, if you have, I played on the NES Classic. I ripped through it in like uh, a night, and then I I got to the very end of the game, and then I finished it in the morning, and I was it, and went great, awesome. Yeah, I mean, you playing some shorter retro stuff is is delightful. It also, I, I was explaining to um, one of our good friends the satisfaction that comes from beating video games, and how like I, I think I've beaten fifteen games this year thus far, and I've. Uh, reviewed two others, meaning that you can't beat those games, but played enough to put a score on them. And I, I was like, when you're like, dude, I beat two games in like a weekend. I was like, I'm so jealous of you, man. That I sounds... have 22 games on my list for this year Holy that I've played. Shit. Yeah. Uh, and and I, there's things I, like, beat, I think yeah. I've beaten 18 of them. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say, there's things like Dragon's Dogma on there that. Yeah. yeah but but that's, I, that's the only one that I would consider to be like, I didn't touch yeah. at all, but I plan on getting back to it. That's, it's so interesting. Do you actually plan on like taking time? Yeah, I mean, like, well, I, in my we, brain... Right I, now, it, we have the largest dry spell I know, at, as so... a channel that we've had in like from a reviewing and, like, need to play games. Right. The next thing up is Hellblade 2, and that's an eight-hour game. If we get a review copy, it's, it's going to be, like, yeah. two or three nights. And then if it's... uh Oh, this is based off of what they've said in, like, showcases. We know nothing about this game. Don't... Yeah. Um, And then... The next thing after that is Ur Tree. So for me, my, I know what my next month is. It's it's Elder Ring. Like that's all I'm gonna do. Right. Um. But for you, it's like you can play whatever though. I know. Fuck it's you ni- want, it's nice dude. to be able to go back and play old stuff. And like, I I was specifically trying to bang out short games just to kind of have a few under my belt for doing reviews. So I did Guitar Man, which was two hours, and then this uh, Mega Man, which was two to three hours. Um. And then I did Manhunt after that, which we'll talk about in a second. Um. Which is supposed to be 10 hours and i think it took me quite a bit longer than okay. that that game wow we'll talk about it in a second we need to make sure that we're keeping pace yeah 
Same but I, where, where, where do you want me to go next? I'm mainly You're asking because I forget one of the games. <laughs> Edith Finch, Hellblade. Oh, Edith Finch. That's the one that I forgot. Um, yeah, what remains of Edith Finch? Let's go there, and then uh, I can close out with the last two um, that I've done. What remains of Edith Finch is fucking awesome. Yeah. Everyone should play this game. From a story perspective, this is the exact thing of, you want to talk about like a story game or what, movie a movie game. game? It's a movie game and a walking sim, but the actual gameplay of the game is really solid. Like It is extremely investing where you want to continue to push forward to figure out what these new mechanics are going to be. And the story is just consistently terrific, heartbreaking, interesting, intricate. Like, I... I I think that every single person should play this game. Like, it's so short. It, for me, it took, like, two hours to be a little bit shorter than that. And with every new story and snippet that you get in this game, I'm on the edge of my seat to figure out what exactly is the hook. What exactly are they trying to thematically say right now? What is happening in this family? What's up? I'm trying to find out what remained of Edith yeah. Finch. <laughs> you, you're just talking yeah. a lot of that. Those um, same lines. I was like, I couldn't help it. Yeah, what remains of Edith Finch. Um, but basically, you go through this story. You're learning about this family uh, through the perspective of different storytelling uh, modes. And so every single time, it's like, how are they going to tell the story? What exactly is going to be the hook of it? And the gameplay on some of these things, uh, somebody mentioned it. I believe the character's name is Lewis. Lewis's story, the gameplay that you use and once again, it's a two-hour game. There's a lot of characters to get through. So every single like gameplay thing is like 10 minutes-ish to experience. Mm -hmm. The gameplay mixed with the story, mixed with the theme that is happening. This 10 minutes, so I'm like, oh, this I understand why this shit won awards. Like right. it, it's it's so good. And that's 10 minutes. That's just a snapshot of it of this game comparatively to the rest of it that's also still amazing and that holds similar threads. Like I, for some reason, one of the things that's coming to my mind is there's a sequence with a kite. Um, and th this is a small spoiler because you're not going to understand the story. But the story is being like, told in the sky. And to progress the story, you have to utilize your kite that's up in the air as the character that they're discussing right now. Mm -hmm. And go and drag over the words. They'll go from black to white. And then the next bit of story will show up. And so it's just like small, stupid mechanics like that. But the story that they're telling is so great. And the way that that story in particular ends is amazing. And just it's five to ten minute story after five to ten minute story as you explore this giant mansion doing all these different gameplay sequences. And the entire time I'm just like, I am so thankful that this is the game that I, I got to play for this short game stream. It's amazing. Yeah. when I So I haven't played it, but I poked in to just see like how many people were watching and, and check in on you guys. And I was like... This is this doesn't look like what I thought Edith Finch was. And yeah. then I like poke poke back in. I was like, are they did they finish the game? Are they playing something completely different? And I was like, I, I guess they're just like like you're saying, they're just a bunch of different gameplay mechanics and yeah. like types of uh of ways to interact with with the and, world and story. And, and all of them yeah. are basic in like premise. Like you're not like doing crazy combos on this uh Tekken 8 esque, but like you're it's every single one was interesting and fresh. And if you at the an amazing thing that I love in video games. If you're not interested, guess what? It's short enough that you're going to be able to move on to the next one, and then you're going to be interested and re-hooked back in. I mm -hmm. loved it. Great game. Play What Remains of Edith Finch. If you have a Friday night in a couple hours, like the best part, too, is it's so short that you don't even need to take a full night to play it. Like You can literally be like, okay, I got it off work. It's 5 o'clock. Go to the grocery store, grab some groceries, come back, 545 I'm going out at eight o'clock tonight. I'm going to beat this game first. And like yeah. that can just be part of a Friday night. It's, it's right. terrific. Next up for me, a uh, quick hit Fallout new Vegas. I've played like the first, like three missions of this, um, hopping back into this world after watching the show, uh, final word on the fallout show, 7.5, eight out of 10. Yep. We both finished it. I think it's good. Nick thinks it's great. Yep. Oh, excuse me. Um, I haven't played this since launch. I don't know if it if it's aged particularly well for me right now like and i don't know if it's just that like i'm not wanting something that's a, like you really have to be engaged in the story and the writing to enjoy new vegas at this point the gameplay is really weak you really have to use vats like i forgot that you really because i i remember playing my memories of fallout at this point because the most recent one i played was four is like decent gunplay mechanics where you don't have to use that you like i was shooting guys point blank 
and with a shotgun and not doing damage. I was like, is is it me or is it the gameplay? It's like, no, you really just got to use vats. And I wish that wasn't the case. Yeah. I, I like, I understand that like you're playing an older game. Like you have to kind of give it some concessions, but for me right now, it's just hard for me to get fully engaged with it because I don't find the gameplay as fun as I remember it being, but the world and the atmosphere and the music and the writing and the characters and everything, ugh, New, New Vegas, there's really still nothing quite like it. And I really do hope that the rumors swirling around of some sort of remaster, because if they can fix that gameplay and give it like Fallout 4 level gameplay uh, or like just remake it all together, like I think this will cement itself if this this rumor is true and this does come to fruition that that there's something new Vegas going on with uh with them wanting to kind of capitalize on the on the success of the Fallout show that that would be like the per that would be a dream for me. Yeah. So I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm probably I shouldn't be playing it. Is one of yeah. those situations where it's like I I have so many games that I could be playing, but the Fallout show got me kind of like wanting to return to this that I'm just like fuck it. Like I'll I'll give it a go and I have my new beefy PC and and it looks pretty good. I could probably mod it. Like I I yeah. I'm not a mod guy. Like we we had discussed we've discussed before. multiple times. Yeah. But like I I'm thinking about it for this because that's what uh, Bethesda games are like the tent pole. Like you're supposed to mod those games to make it totally. better or whatever. Wh um, which I I'm like that's part of the reason I don't think a lot of those games are great is because you do need mods. Aka yeah. you need to make the game better because the games are themselves not that great. Right. Um. There's also notes? a little bit. I like the populated areas. And like the set piece areas, I really don't know how I feel about the wasteland returning to it. Like it is very empty, but it, that's like the point. Like you're in the desert, like it's supposed yeah. to be like open and dusty and everything. But like walking from point A to point B, it's just like uh, I wish there was a little bit more variety and a little bit more spice of life on on exploration and and interactions and, and gameplay to, to kind of keep me keep me going it's an issue that i have with skyrim as well and yeah. that's the games in general it's something that why i like starfield as much as i do is that you are fast traveling just to the next exciting moment it just strips out all that like that middle period of just walking from point a to point b so you talking through this right now solidifies one thing in my head i don't want to return to play these games yeah um and i know that i get a lot of flack for not enjoying bethesda games not everything needs to be for everyone. And right. for me, a desolate gray world with gameplay mechanics that can be frustrating at times, although the atmosphere is great and, yeah. and the story is great. And like, I, I just will get that fixed in a different place. Yeah. It's something that I just think that Bethesda really needs to go back to the drawing board on completely. Starfield doesn't necessarily fix it when it comes to the gameplay and, and, and all that. Like they nail worlds and environments and like interact, interactive ability interactability is that a word uh, interactivity was yeah what i was thinking yeah but. uh like how you can interact with the world and everything like they really do nail that in all of their games but they need to figure out how to like make a really engrossing gameplay system to to enjoy and, and get you really immersed in these worlds because it's totally pulling me out oftentimes so yeah, yeah. all right i'm going to be real quick with my next one hellblade I'm about four hours deep. Brady keeps on talking about it. He just beat it. He loves it. I'm I I'm trying, I'm trying to find some time. Though I, thankfully, like this weekend was bit, like I binged Gen V this weekend. I was doing editing and other work stuff. Like and like what I'm not able to just sit down and like play a game while binging a show. Obviously, mm -hmm. but I or I'm not able to. I said that's the wrong way. I'm not able to play a game while doing work stuff. And so that's nice. My free time does not exist too much right now. I will beat Hellblade before I start Elden Ring and I need to start Elden Ring soon. So I, I'm really enjoying what I've played thus far. Me and Connor have uh, some not totally differing opinions on Hellblade. I think it's it, obviously not just extremely unique, but like really fucking good. And so, um, yeah, there's nothing else like it on PlayStation's platform and I'm stoked for Hellblade 2. I, I need to beat it before Hellblade 2. You mean on Xbox's uh, platform? The, I, no, there's nothing like it on PlayStation's platform. Oh. Like, there's a, the, this type of game with the audio design and everything. Obviously, third person over the shoulder, but, like, it what it trades in for, like, a great story for that type of game, it goes and amplifies with terrific atmosphere and, obviously, what it does better than almost any other game I've ever played its audio design. 
Right. So love it. I'm very excited to beat it. I'll talk more about it when I do. I couldn't remember when that game came out. 2017. Yeah. I thought it was 16 for a second. I haven't played it since launch. Yeah. So I I don't remember a ton about that game. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So I, I, the I just fun, remember not loving the combat. The fun part about Brady playing it right now and beating it and enjoying it the way he did was for me, I've been like, I kind of enjoyed this combat. Like, what I've always heard, the combat's not that great. I enjoy it. And Brady also really enjoys it. And That's Brady, fine. for me, is someone that like likes a lot of the combat that I do, likes a lot right. of the basic third person action style combat. So it's good to see that he enjoyed it too. Uh, if you want his thoughts, pop in the stream on Mondays. He'll, he'll yap about it for as long as you let him. My, I'm just, I'm still playing Rebirth. I'm back on Rebirth. Uh, working on the platinum, I've restarted my like actual proper playthrough, playing hard mode. Uh, before doing the legendary missions, you can do one or the other first. I just wasn't really feeling like grinding out the legendary missions, um, and I wanted to get back to the story in the world and the characters. Still excellent, still amazing. Like, still your game of the year. Still my game of the year. One hundred and forty hours in. Yeah, I love it. I just, I just love these characters and I love this world and I getting back into some of these set piece moments with like the big boss fights and everything when the music is swelling like. Oh my god! I'm just excited <laughs> so good. to experience the orchestra in August with you, yeah. and just sink into some, like, the soundtrack being now released and everything. It's it's something that I listen to almost every day. Yeah. Um, it's it's terrific. Me? No, I I can. Gengaga. <laughs> hey, I got gotcha. you. I, I thought, yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, my final game is Manhunt. Finished this last night. I don't love this game and oh, no. it's not because of the way that you might think like you might think it's because of the controversy around it and like the themes of it and like how gruesome it is like this game was very controversial when it came out uh you're playing uh as a guy who was on death row that uh instead of being killed is forced to make snuff films um where he like goes around and like kills people um it's disturbing and like off-putting but i didn't think it was as gruesome as i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be like really fucked up and i think there's ways to make it more fucked up like you when you're creeping up behind somebody because it's a stealth game you can like you can hold square and i didn't know this until like way late in the game you can hold hold square to like it's a gray circle or like a gray like arrow uh around them and then it can become uh yellow the longer you stay behind them and, and hold uh square uh, to do like a more gruesome kill and then like it can be read to do like a extra gruesome kill and it's like they're not like that crazy like yeah. in 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 how disturbing they are like by each level but like it's like okay that's how you get your stars up i just found the stealth in this game to be like really frustrating and oftentimes incons inconsistent but i think that's really just a product of it being like a ps2 game and having some like jank when it comes to the controls Dude, I cannot believe how many of these old games don't have the option to invert your camera. It doesn't have a free flowing camera. Like you yeah. can't and if and if you're not moving, it, it will like make you go first person. But if you are moving, left is right and right is left. It's like why? Why is that the case? But so that was frustrating. And it's a stealth game up until a, a point, and then you start getting guns, and then it becomes a GTA shootout game where you're just running around getting your getting your shots in and it doesn't control great controls like an old gta game which is fine but like it took away a lot of like the aspects that i did even like about it like the stealth aspects but i, I at some point i was like i just want this game to be over like i didn't really love it like there was the my main message when it comes to manhunt is like if you have this idea to make a game about a guy who forced to make snuff films and you want to go really gruesome like I feel like there needs to be a reason to do that. Like you have to have some crazy, awesome, fun gameplay scenario in your head to like to justify going forward with this. Is there a twist or something that like? No. Oh man, I, if that's just the game, like I, I'll, I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm never playing this game then. Yeah. I mean, like it goes pretty much exactly. Like you're forced to do it by this guy who's like talking into your ear. You're killing like not innocent people. You're killing like neo Nazis and and like and. Like, so they try to justify it in that way, but like, 
it, it's still like whatever like yeah. I, I don't know like it's one of those games that would never get made today there's no way that there's, there's definitely not a sequel or anything right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's a second game i think i'll probably play it eventually just to kind of complete that that chapter of my life <laughs> of playing manhunt because this is one of those games that like was talked about as like this i remember seeing it on blockbuster shelves and being scared of the cover art it's, it's weird it's it's a product of its time I'm glad that I did play it and I now I have this like knowledge of this this game, but like I my my core message is that I don't really think the ends justify the means for for this game's creation. Like if they had a really fun gameplay system that like and and they needed to do this, then like fine. But like yeah. they're clear like it didn't need to be the setting, it didn't need to be this gruesome and, and gross at times or whatever. So like just I, I don't know. It's fine. It's it's not a bad game it's just like a game that i don't know if i'll think about <laughs> like for the rest of my life after yeah. after reviewing it so it's fine i don't re recommend it but i'm glad that i played it great um are you done yeah we got one game left to discuss can love bloom on the battlefield nick <laughs> mail gear solid it'll get yeah. um when we started this channel <laughs> that's how it started this conversation when we started this channel way back Bef I'll, I'll even include before we were officially Call of 64. And Connor and I were to talk about games. Even I, We didn't go even before content creation. And we were just talking about games. Metal Gear Solid was looked at as old. So I didn't have a lot of opportunities to play it. But as consistently discussed as one of the greatest games of all time. Yep. And to have an experience where you're just like... This is supposed to be this. This is supposed to knock my socks off, in a way that is cinematic, in a way that is epic. Great characters, fun gameplay. I was like, "There's no, there's no way this lives up." Especially even playing something like Final Fantasy VII Original this year, which, like, when you talk about best PS One games, Final Fantasy VII Original comes up quite often. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, oh, this is a great game, but it's not like one of the greatest games I've ever played. I, I prefer uh, Rebirth. Like uh, and uh, and remake over the the gameplay of uh, of seven original and obviously I can appreciate something for the time but right. the longevity uh, discussion of this game like going back and playing it in the year 2023 2024 it's it's tough sometimes this game's one of the best games I've ever played yeah like instantly one of my favorite games I've ever played and I I cannot stop thinking about literally throughout the workday about metal gear solid one i'm playing metal gear 2 on stream right now and i'm loving it but metal gear solid one is so immensely special right off the rip like you get into your first boss fight and i i'm i don't want to spoil like the exact mechanics or whatever but like you get revolver ocelot psycho mantis sniper wolf these just iconic fight after iconic fights and each one is better than the next. Each one, but it's funny because the first one is actually the one that solidified that this is gonna be one of my favorite games ever. Yeah. Where the mechanics really simple, but it still feels epic, still feels cinematic, still mm -hmm. has a way of like fun to it. Where I'm like, oh, this would blow your fucking mind if you were playing this right. 25 years ago. But right now playing it, I'm still blown away with how much fun the core mechanics of this game are. And then you throw in a story that is just simply fucking cool. Like, yeah. it's so cool. They didn't have to go that hard to make this game this cool. And they did. And it was awesome. The level I, of cool just is highlighted by the names of the characters. Yeah. Vulcan Raven. Sniper, Sniper Wolf. Wolf. Revolver Ocelot. <laughs> Psycho Mantis. Uh, who, what's the ninja's name? Fuck. Cyborg Ninja. Cyborg Ninja. And then Liquid and Solid Snake. Liquid. Liquid. Uh, and then the Metal Gear. Uh, 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 like like, like, just uh, Let's yeah. make that cool. Meryl. Meryl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Colonel. Like, Colonel, dude. Mei Ling. It just, everyone in everyone's this game, badass. Yeah. everyone's awesome. The way that this game, it, uh, talk about movie games. This is one of the coolest fucking movie games ever. Yeah. And it's totally a movie game. And I loved every minute of it. I don't think it. it works as a movie, though. It's one of those situations that they've been trying to make the Metal Gear Solid movie for years yeah. now. And it's like, dude, this works because it's a video game. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. I, I like, think it works well as the merge. I think it works well as yeah. you have. It is basically also a bit of a book where when those codec calls pop up, it, it, it is 
text and you're reading and you're understanding. But then there's also moments of epic gameplay that like it, it still feels when when you're in that. I, for me, there's a a a fight where you use a sniper, and I it's there's like pills you take to steady your shot. Yeah, as a friend. And, and when I went to go and do it the first time, I had six pills, and I did it, and it was great. And then I didn't save properly, mm. and I had to go back and redo this fight. And then the second time I did it, I had two steady pills. So I had to nail my shots because yeah. they would go away after a certain amount of time. And I like I finished that fight on like the second or third try, and I, I don't know if it, the clip is still out there or anything, but there's this moment where I just go, Fuck yeah! And like I like almost like toss my controller. Like I'm so purely stoked. I don't know if I've had that feeling besides a game like Rebirth or Hell Divers this year. Like those like just pure gaming euphoric moments. And Metal Gear has those in spades. I think that anyone should pick up the collection. People that are like, oh, I need a better remake of this. Yeah, re- remake this game. Like of course that that would be awesome. Yeah. But. I need like a better remake of this game. It does not play well in the year 2024. If you don't think this game plays well in the year 2024, you don't think that any retro game plays well. That right. like any game that it is holds before, up great. it holds up great for a PS1 game. I I cannot believe how good of a game this is. I now fucking understand Kojima for being the pedestaled creator that he is. I love it. I, I'm yeah. stoked to beat two. Everyone says two just keeps on getting better. It the does. The ending of two, no spoilers, but like the w- <laughs> I, 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 it's fucking insane. We, we have a couple of people that are playing through them right now <laughs> oh in our God. community, and they're like one of them just beat two recently. It was just like, like I was all about one. I was on the one train for yeah. a while, being better than two, and then the ending of two happened, and I was like, what the shit? Well, one is better I mean, than two, but the ending of two is fucking. Insane. I, I well, certain people say two is better than one, and to, two is go, a lot of is a, a lot of people's, people's favorite. To go and even have. A game that could be close to as good as Metal Gear Solid 1 in the same conversation that's in the same well. series. And then there's three also. <laughs> like, we're talking Which about... Which is a lot of people's favorite. <laughs> I know. We're talking about just pure greatness. All right. We got to yeah. draft and we got to draft fast. Yeah. Okay. We have stream tonight. That's that's the big the big issue. Oh, man. You're up. Oh, shit. Okay. You're I up. A, oh, do, do I do it? You're a being. I'm a pooping. Um... Do I just take the person from you? Just to, <laughs> no, just to mess with I, he's you? way down my board. I know, but just to like just, just, just to draft mess with you. the way that you were going to draft. All right, don't game the system. Today we are drafting the best non-human video game characters. It's I thought it was just gonna be an all aliens draft, but as I did more research, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be fun. Because with my first pick, I'm gonna choose Pikachu. Easy 101, one of the most iconic characters in all of gaming i'm gonna get a little bit weirder as the list goes on but i think that the, with the 101 i just need to solidify the most talent possible with this first pick pikachu with the 101 for my first pick when you think non-human characters you gotta go with the nerd pick here we're going sonic with my first overall pick when you think of non-human characters you think of sonic i'm sorry like I, that was the first one that came into mind so i have to go with sonic with my first pick it was the first one that came to my mind yeah. also i think that pikachu is a better character and more fun and more adorable with my second pick we're gonna go with kirby a character that doesn't have a lot of personality necessarily but is the star of their own series. But most importantly, they're the star of Super Smash Bros. <laughs> so Kirby with my second pick. All right. With my next two picks, I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to start out with a hero. Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. An amazing PS2 mascot that is extended well past their PS2 lifetime. Everyone loves your sly. Everyone talks about Jack and Dexter, but Ratchet has stood the test of time and is an amazing character. But also, just the get he's a vehicle for all the fun guns and gadgetry. I, I love Ratchet. And with my next pick, I'm choosing a top five villain in gaming. I'm choosing GLaDOS yeah. from Portal. GLaDOS is infinitely terrifying, hysterical, and amazing. Enough's been said about GLaDOS. Truly one of the best characters in gaming. With my third pick, we're going to go with 
the best Mass Effect character, Garrus. Just the absolute homie, dude. He's got your back. That's my freaking boy, Garrus. I will die for Garrus, I swear. <laughs> swear to God, he's one of my favorite characters ever. Just like, so cool. He's, he's just... A bro, dude. Garrus with my third pick. I thought about sniping just to destroy Connor's week. <laughs> I, the thing is, I could go with just a ton of Mass Effect characters. Yeah. This, the whole list could be Mass Effect characters, yeah. in my opinion. Mm, okay, where do we go here? With my fourth pick, we're going to go with a little artificial intelligence. We're going to go with Cortana, a character that is kind of the heart and soul of the Halo franchise. I love her development throughout one through three, and I think the pinnacle of this character is four, honestly. Cortana with my fourth pick. Oh, okay. It's, tough. I, I, it's, it's tough. so There's tough. so many directions you yeah, can go in. There's, like, there's so many Nintendo characters is my issue. Right. The Nintendo is stacked with great characters that are not humans. Um... How weird do I want to get? Do I want to... I'm going to get weird. I'm going to have some fun. I think I have a good team at the start, so I'm going to have some fun. Mm -hmm. With my fourth pick, I'm going to choose another terrific villain. I'm choosing Bowser. One of the, the most iconic, fun villains out there, whether it's Odyssey or Super Mario 3. Great time. With my last pick, I'm going to have a blast and choose another villain. One of the most devious villains of all time. One of the greatest villains of all time. One a villain that just gets under your skin and annoys you and just really like is just on your back 24-7, breathing down your neck, trying to make you make those payments. I'm talking about Tom Nook, baby, from Animal Crossing. I love Tom Nook. <sighs> really cute, really fun character. I'm choosing Tom Nook. I I, I thought about doing Isabel, and I'm not yeah. I'm not gonna do it. Uh I, I, Isabella and Tom Nook were on my board. There's uh, this this board. The undrafted team could beat both of yeah. our teams. It's, DK, it's Crash yep. Bandicoot, yep. Mega Man, Sly. Spyro, Sly Cooper, and for the Mass Effect characters, Liara, um, Morden. Uh, so many good options there. <laughs> I'm gonna throw in this draft. <laughs> oh, you're throwing in the draft. I'm throwing the draft. <laughs> are you, are she's Donald? No. <laughs> With my final pick in the draft. We're going with the... Oh, I'm going to redo that. <laughs> with my final pick in the draft, we're going with the freaking rapping dog. Yeah. Parappa the rapper, dude. Rapping dog, funniest shit I've ever, ever seen. seen. <laughs> dude is learning karate. He's taking his driving test. He's saving the world, okay? Parappa the rapper with my final pick. I, I Honestly, when we started this draft and like I threw out the, that as the topic tonight, I literally thought of Parappa immediately. Immediately. So oh I don't God. dislike the pick. Good, good job. This was a fun draft. Yeah. All right. We need to close this podcast. Ridiculous now. parameters. All righty. What, what an amazingly fun podcast this was yeah. to just talk about some fucking games. Video games are cool, man. Thank you so much for watching this week. This is the Casual Gaming Conversation. Uh, post every week, Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We stream on Twitch, Monday, Thursday, 7 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we new also, TikToks every day. Yeah, new TikToks every day. And a new thing that we're doing, if you like more of us just talking about games, 6.30 before stream every single a weekday, we do TikTok lives. Uh, and then during the weekends, you, you'll probably see Connor on a few of them. I might be, do a couple every now and then. Like this right. weekend, prime example. We have no uh, weekend content. I will be off the grid for the weekend, but maybe Connor will do a TikTok live or right. something. Uh, but this is also, I'm already away. Oh, mm -hmm. shit. Okay. Just in general, that's going to happen, though, too, in the future. Yeah. All righty. Peace out.